Ladies and gentlemen, I thought I would be taking today easy, but guess what? There's an Age of Mythology patch, so let's take a look. Let's take a look and talk about these massive changes. They're pretty big, actually, so let's take a look. Some of them are conservative, however. There's a bunch of stability fixes, so tons of your crashes, out of sinks, etc. should be resolved. However, that's not going to be the case with replace just yet or the spectator mode i'm afraid so that's probably coming in a future patch but i've already experienced this stuff um so it is what it is on that front i'm afraid but there's gonna be a ton of very very nice fixes uh flickers have been fixed the battle cries are playing again i've seen a lot of complaints especially on the reddit about this uh technology tree now accessible from the learn tab that's great Generally, this cross-access for the menus would be very, very important to have. I'd like to be able to access the tech tree and the learn tab while matchmaking. Actually, that would be so, so nice. Um, because I, I still don't remember all the stats myself. I'm sure most people don't. There's a lot that has changed and a lot of new players coming in, so that would be very useful. Skype Vestige Foundations could eject before? Okay, well, it's a good thing that he changed that before <laughs> Red Bull Vololo, that's a bit exploity sounding. A uh, bunch of controller fixes, we're not necessarily going to be covering that here. Uh, they seem to be pretty minor. I know, however, there's issues such as you can't actually garrison your fishing ships on controller, which is just absolutely insane, they have to fix that stuff. But they've introduced... A new multiplayer thing, I think it's down here somewhere, where you can now uh, choose whether you can whether you opt out of cross-network play or not. And that's not a very good thing for controller players, I will say that much about controllers. So what you would ideally have is that you have PC keyboard and mouse players, right? Keyboard and mouse players playing against keyboard and mouse players and controller players playing against controller players. What we don't wants restricted as players because we want maximum numbers of players everywhere, right? Doesn't matter what kind of machine you're playing on, what kind of uh, software you use to launch AOM, who cares? These guys are currently restricting, uh, if you enable this option, they are restricting Steam versus Microsoft Store on the PC and um, like versus Xbox and all that. So these free platforms should be able to intermix whenever they want to. There should be no option to restrict this because it's stupid. It splits the player base. What there should exist is a input method thing. So that's my little rant on this front. Now let's take a look at all these fixes. Favor is no longer shown in temples for non-Greek players. Of course, only the Greeks can gather from temples. Makes sense. Attempting to pick up relics before a temple is built will now show that a temple is required. That's right. Retold has changed it so that you require heroes before picking up... Uh, so you require a temple before your heroes can pick up relics. So that is very important to showcase because people are just confused about it. I've seen a bunch of streamers just trying to pick it up and it doesn't work with their pharaoh. <laughs> you need a temple, bro. Yep. Trained units garrison into gatherer point target if set to garrison level building. Very good. So your villagers won't be standing outside of the fortress. If your fortress completes, they all just pop right in. Removed rally point icon for buildings without that functionality. Of course. Villagers order to attack move will no longer go to an idle state and become stuck in some situations. Uh, well, they can't take attack move orders to begin with. But what will they do then? That's what it doesn't say. Because the villagers can't be attack moved. Can they be attack moved now? I'm gonna quickly check this. Okay, so here's what happens when you attack move. Villagers just walk to the location so they don't get idle, they don't get stuck. And your military fights, but your villagers cannot attack move. They still have to be ordered with a, a direct right click. So yeah, we're still living in the archaic ages and we need to advance to the classical age if that would be possible please which as you would expect means that basically i want to see attack move on villagers it would be very nice quality of life all right fixed villagers occasionally getting stuck on animal carcasses yes so good however i've already played the game a bit and they still get stuck on trees 
So that's messed up. Uh, hopefully they will be able to fix that one as well. I haven't seen, however, them getting stuck on animal carcasses. So that's great. Golden Burst is properly spawned when cast over an untouched farm foundation instead of nothing happening. Thank you. Uh, that was actually one of the things that happened to me when I first played Freyr in a ranked match. I spawned in my Golem Bursty, except he never spawned, and then I got angry, and I said I'm never playing it again until he's fixed. Now he's fixed. Now I'll give it a chance, huh? <laughs> Relics picked up by a hero no longer return to the original position when a hero dies on land and no suitable position is found. This happened to me a bunch of times. Uh, I was actually bolting a hero, holding a relic. I was like, I'm gonna pick up that relic. No, the relic teleported back into Narnia, so that was not good. Units not thrown by the Sentimental Shockwave attack due to size class constraints are no longer damaged twice. So this was basically the Sentimental doing massive damage against huge units like, I don't know, the Hydra, for example. It's big, right? You can't throw it, but. It just got multiple uh, damage ticks from the shockwave and it absolutely wrecked it. So Sentimanus spam was actually busted and bugged. So really glad they got to fix this before the tournament. When the villager priority system is enabled, site-based commands to build drop sites will now correctly construct buildings. We don't really care about that. I personally disable this because it's not a competitive feature because it automatically fixes villagers. Uh, that will be doing the job. I want to pick them myself because I know what I'm trying to do. Uh, you should rely on that as well if you're playing competitively. If you're playing casually, then this is obviously a fine system to make use of. Barrage arrows will now align with their path. I'm not entirely certain what this means. I think this is a visual fix only for the arrow uh, orientation. Walk path updates to improve how they are shown in some situations, such as when hunting. Um, not entirely sure what that's going to mean, but we'll see. Costs shown in the compendium will no longer show as red text if you have insufficient resources. Yeah, the compendium will not be interactive with the current game, so that's pretty important. Market buy sell commands are now grayed out if the player does not have sufficient resources. Yep. That's a good idea as well. Villager priority system icon will no longer hide when the when the expanded minimap mode while using mouse and keyboard. Oh my god. You know, it, it was that that was hiding as well as the control group. So hopefully this is all sorted out now. The immediately auto queue villagers at game start setting can now be toggled while in game. Doesn't really matter because once you're in game, you're not at the game start anymore, but you still do want to be able to change things. Pending auto queue entries will no longer flicker if the player does not have enough resources to train auto queue units. But that's kind of a warning system, is it not? I guess they don't need to because you did order the auto queue. Toggling auto queue with multiple buildings selected will now maintain a consistent state throughout all selected buildings of the same type. Which basically means that you can just uh, turn it on or off, even if they're spread out. Yeah, that's nice. Campaign balance changes, we don't really cover that here. Uh, we're off to general balance, which is some interesting stuff here. Heroic age has been increased for the research time, which means a fast heroic will hit 15 seconds slower. Generally, Heroic will hit, hit 15 seconds slower, so it's a bigger commitment, more of a chance to <laughs> accidentally lose a town center while this is happening, if you're behind. That's nice. Uh, we do see a lot of extended classical age gaming, however, but most of that boils down to just, you know, a bunch of myth units being extremely broken, like the Minotaurs or the Centaurs at the moment. As in particular those, whereas the other factions, they typically want to be going for that heroic age uh, rather than spamming stuff in the classical age too much. In the mythic age, research time is increased from 90 to 120 seconds. Now that is going to be a huge nerf to uh, the faster mythic timing, such as when you want to go taught with the Egyptians and uh, print out the elephants and get that... Uh, Meteor landed on your opponent's base. So this is a very very nice delay there it buys you a little time to prepare 
uh, for the late game while Egyptian is pressuring you. It's in particular important for that matchup, whereas the others not so much. Town center and Citadel center accuracy increased, so there was a chance for them to miss their shots apparently. And making that full accuracy is basically a guaranteed hit, so long as the target doesn't change direction or isn't way too fast for the town center to track. Which is great. Uh, the pierce damage is also increased, so you can't just dive into the enemy bases anymore. Uh, which should also help. It's like a counterbalance to this heroic age change. So if you do play a relatively naked heroic, age, fast heroic, or semi fast heroic, or even just uh, two town set to boom, you should be able to slightly better defend yourself with just your stuff that you already have. People can dive you, which is nice. Garrison range for buildings reduced from 4 to 3. That's great because teleportation of units was a real thing. Especially when you're looking at bigger models like chariot archers trying to pop into, into Migdol strongholds. They were able to just escape from ridiculous situations. I love this. Uh, trees would increase from 150 to 200. Now that's big. That is a big, big, big one third buff uh, to the wood available on the map because the economy is now bigger and late game uh, basically consumes the resources on the map faster uh, with 100 villagers available that essentially means that trees need to last longer for the game to last longer itself and this will make things like the wonder age a little bit more accessible not necessarily more common though <laughs> Wonders are very expensive, but now you'll at least have the possibility to make uh, enough of an enough of a bank with this. It's within the realms of possibility. Then the huntable animal decay has been reduced because it's so easy to just kill the animals out on the map. I assume uh, you 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 don't want to go out there and just find these dead animals that have halfway decayed already. So I I'm a fan of this change. It also makes it actually so that um, when you herd your animals, like by whacking it with your weak scouts in the early game, if you whack them into the right positions for perfect distribution around your buildings so that they're you know, not walking far away from it so that your workers can more efficiently work, basically this buffs that kind of situation as well, where you kill all the animals and they don't decay too much. Now Hades got the nerf to his hit point bonus to myth units, uh, just a 5% reduction there, not a big deal. It's a big deal in terms of how much of the bonus he loses, but I mean, Hades was doing pretty well anyway, right? So this shouldn't be too severe of a nerf. But then you couple it with the other stuff that's about to happen to him, and suddenly he, he's going to start feeling it. So yeah, you know what? This is actually a big deal, and it affects him throughout the game, no matter what his choices are. Then Gastro Federos also are getting a pierce damage reduction. Uh, but they are really, really strong units anyway, so I'm not sure that's really a problem. Super good at sniping things like the Son of Osiris, super good for the late game in general, super good against buildings. It's fine. It's fine. They're quite mobile, they're quite high ranged. It's okay. Dionysus has a small, tiny bronze nerf. Uh, we don't mind too much about that one because this armor change is truly tiny. Just get an extra upgrade, man. It's totally fine. Uh, I, I see a lot of Hades players and Poseidon players actually using this without the baseline upgrade. So just get the baseline upgrades. They're dirt cheap. And then do your bronze timing. It should be fine. Uh, Minotaur has been adjusted. Gold cost increase and one favorite increase actually. The 30 gold, however, is the big deal here. Uh, gold is a quite available resource because you're not spending your villager economy. Um, on that, you're not Norse, <laughs> so your villagers will be costing food, right? The Minotaur is thus quite available if you're overgathering from gold. If you're attacking, you have the possibility of getting gold from outside of your base as well. So gold is a quite available resource overall. Hades also has the tech uh, that generates it for free. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, to give it to Hades for this cheap. And the Pierce armor has been reduced, so your ranged heroes will be a little bit better. Except Egyptians. Egyptians deal divine damage, so they don't care about armor. But this helps uh, the other Greeks 
And it actually makes centaurs stronger against minotaurs, which is actually a little bit of a problem because centaurs are not on the nerf list. And I'm sure the devs know, like, you, you know, the way this works, they're, the devs are not stupid, okay? <laughs> the way this works with Microsoft is you have to submit your, your patches for verification um, internally to the Xbox teams. And then they do that. But that's a long process that can take a week or two. Um, so before these patches are actually launched, they're in this verification process for a long time. That's why they uh, don't instantly react to things. So they're reacting here basically to feedback from two, three, four weeks ago. Um, even the early access phase and stuff like that. So yeah, don't hold it against them too much. The centaurs are absolutely busted though and must be in the next patch. I will say that much. Now, Hydra and Scylla have been nerfed, so that- Oh, wait, sorry, the Cyclops, that's, <laughs> Let's not forget the big chunky boys with the bonky sticks. Now, they have gotten a food cost reduction, which is actually okay. I mean, you might notice that 150, 150, that seems familiar, right? Aren't they gonna have the same problem like the Minotaurs that are getting overly spammed? Well, no, because you're spending your food on your villagers, so they're instantly less available than the Minotaurs would be. You're spending food probably on either Hippicons or Hoplites uh, to go with them. Although you te technically could do uh, Toxodes based uh, support setup for these guys, but then 18 favor as well, that, uh, that's pretty expensive, you know, and these are slow units that can't knock the enemies away as easily. They have this uh, pickup ability where they toss enemy units in a certain direction that, by the way, you can now target a little bit with just right click attacks after the pickup which is lovely, but, you know, these are still very slow, very vulnerable units, even with the armor buffs seen here. I appreciate these, but uh, they're not going to make this unit OP, I don't think, but they might make it viable. That's the important part. Now, Hydra and Scylla gaining head slower is very, very important. These are relatively small nerfs for the first, first few heads, especially head four. Still very attainable, right? I mean, it's a big change. It's a 50% extra uh, damage required, but uh, once you have three heads, the extra damage there is actually just a handful attack, so this is not going to be a big, big deal. Head 5, however, is, is far removed, so you're probably going to need some form of healing. You're going to need the uh, technology that makes them heal, or regenerate, rather. That's pretty nice. Chimera have gotten the nerf, which is, I think, very justified. Even though I, I did heavily enjoy <laughs> their special attacks and their strong hit points and food costs and all that, it is food cost. Food is a very infinite resource, it's a very abundant resource. And farming has been significantly buffed compared to the original game. So you swim in it in the late game. If you have like 30 farmers, you're loaded. You're loaded. And these chimeras costing that makes them essentially not a big commitment, so them being a little weaker, very reasonable, and having a damage reduction for the special attack against heroes, obviously very important because it's divine damage. <laughs> so not having that, uh, actually it probably could have melted heroes before. Now, Toxodi's train time has been increased, which uh, makes my, my guide video for uh, gather rates and uh, times outdated, but people should get the concept. This was a very necessary change actually and I'm not sure that I still like the Hoplites having this super low train time still because they're not on this list so they haven't been fixed. Peltas have been uh, bumped up because they're now a really strong units uh, but yeah you know Hoplites and Hippeus are still uh, in this heavily boosted train time setup. And I'm not sure that's a really healthy thing for these super strong Greek, Greek units to train fast. It gets particularly crazy when you, once you're in the later game and you have the Levy and Conscript update upgrades and they just get printed in a handful of seconds. It's nuts. So I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that, but Toxodis going back to normal is a good thing for sure. Especially with Hades who who gets ballistics in the heroic age for free, so you, you would really have this insane timing. And the DM players, the deathmatch mode players, have seen what I can do with 
uh, mass, ma mass Hades took Sodis in death mode as well. <laughs> because of ballistics, you can't micro against it, and they're just the most cost efficient unit in the game, basically. So, very problematic, especially coupled with, with Pestilence in that game mode. Um, so, don't know if that will carry over to the standard mode. Probably not anymore, but yeah, it's something to watch out for. The Mass Toxodes is still spooky. I still really, really dislike uh, the fact that Ballistics makes you just... Uh, it turns your archers into snipers, and there's very little you can do about it. Uh, they also kind of don't synchronize their shots, which means that they're staggered, which makes microing against them extremely difficult and just honestly not worth your time. It's probably better off that you micro other stuff. Have, worry about your focus firing, worry about your pullback micro, but don't try to bait projectiles because I, I just don't think it's, it's viable or worth it compared to other forms of micro. Now, a hip aspis rate of fire reduction, uh, uh, well, increase, technically, uh, because it's now slower, that makes it a weaker unit against infantry, basically, or anything. It has been a really strong unit against infantry, so the Norse should be worried still. <laughs> it can kind of hold against cavalry with the high hack armor, too, so very good frontline unit to hit us fist for sure. Helipolis hit points reduced. Now, you know, Greek late game always has been kind of nuts, but now it's even more nuts, and one of the reasons for that is that the one civ that could truly contest them in the late game, Egypt, has had their siege tower nerfed in, in crush armor. So the Helipolis is actually wrecking the siege tower, so they don't have a direct counter anymore to the Helipolis. Uh, they used to have like 90% armor and the devs dropped it down to 50%. That's like one of the biggest changes the game has ever had. So Helipolis dropping a bit of HP is very reasonable here. Uh, Patrol Bullets are gaining a damage boost against ships, which for whatever reason was missing. Uh, that was always a part of the game. These slow uh, siege units should definitely have a bonus against ships so that they can clean up up the shores. Pentaconer got a health buff. Now, I don't have an explanation for this one. It might be to deal with the naval myth units. It might not be. Um, maybe they're just deemed weak when it comes to fighting the uh, ranged compositions on the sea. So, against archer ships and sea ships and then those guys retreating into dock range where they're covered by more ranged, ranged fire from the docks themselves. So maybe the Pentaconers just need a little bit more oomph here. Fortresses have been nerfed. Yeah, fortresses are nuts in Retold because all the shots are hitting. <laughs> Especially post-ballistics. So in the old game, you would only have one of the projectiles hitting and the others hitting unintentionally, which would drastically reduce their damage. Here, all of the shots hit, so the fortress has got mega buffed. Reducing the damage is reasonable, for sure. Because it was like tripled anyway. <laughs> Coming over to here. And it was of set. Hit points reduced by 25%. Oh, that's so good. Because set has been absolutely dominating the top level. You just get the zoo of animals, especially from the map if you can convert them. And having lower hit points for them just makes them kind of kind of threatened by villagers as well as the army. So they shouldn't be, I think, heavily fighting units, but rather for your economy. So you bring them home, you eat them, rather than go and donate them to your opponent. I've had them donated to me a bunch of times, and it can be really good uh, to be on the receiving side of that, of course, because you can now eat them as they die in your base. So you just make a granary there, or put a um, drop site, whatever, ox cart, if you're Norse, and just eat them. So, you know, it's not that bad when you get attacked, but Sometimes it can be overwhelming. Now, Ra empowerment with priests and pharaoh-empowered monuments is now 70% the strength of the pharaoh. That was 60% before. So this is a really nice Ra economy buff overall, and we'll definitely use it uh, 
when when we empower the monuments and put all the monuments in the area and uh, get the gold mining and get the hunt and get the farms and get the trees from all this all the one location with just the one pharaoh empowering yeah that's sick let's let's do more of that uh nefties had some changes to spirit of mat that's a big nerf to the heal rate improvement now the plus 100 percent is uh carry over from the legacy game and 50% makes sense here because priests can now focus heal. So they can, multiple priests can target, well, not just priests, but any healing unit can target the same thing and work together on healing faster. So reducing this a little bit is very reasonable. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to lose your siege towers in a pre siege setup or something like that. Or you can uh, focus heal your scorpion men, something like that. Eclipse duration has been reduced from 86 to 80 seconds. Now, I'm not entirely on board with this because one, Ra sucks. And number two, um, Ancestor's Eclipse has been hugely nerfed. First off, Eclipse doesn't block God powers anymore as it used to. And the other thing is that Ancestors themselves uh, just spawn so slowly. And then, you know, there's just... Uh, a ton more myth units in play, so they get kind of countered by myth units that do bonus against myth units. Um, I, I think this isn't the god power it used to be, so... Oh, also, Eclipse got actually nerfed in effect, so it's only a plus 20% buff to myth units rather than plus 50. So I, I'm not happy with this. I, what's wrong with Eclipse? Why is it so shit? Uh, no offense to anybody, but it sucks. It really needs to be buffed. Not nerfed. I'm so confused. Granted, Isis is good, but uh, this was unnecessary, I think. This is not what makes Isis good. Even Isis should be going Anubis most of the time. Now, Plague of Serpents, the god power, has been nerfed as well. So that it's two fewer snakes. Uh, and it's just two snakes spawning every three seconds instead of every two seconds. Which is a 50% reduction in how quickly they get all spawned, which gives them gives you some time to deal with them. Unfortunately, the ones on C are OP as hell, and dogs can't shoot them. So I really hope that uh, that's gonna get introduced because people would just pop down your plague of serpents right in front of your dog, and you wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Honestly, they are usually surround your ships as they come out, and then their ships actually get to be active. You have to garrison. And ultimately, you just have to go fast heroic to deal with this. It's not fun. You should be able to fight in classical. And considering that they nerfed the Scylla, I think that's going to be kind of necessary now. Now, Sobek got a buff. With Locust Swarm no longer wrecking your own units and buildings, which is great. <laughs> Minus 90%. Yeah, that, that's not going to wreck your stuff. Then Tornado can now damage settlements that are being constructed, which... Nasty bug. That they wouldn't be able to do that before. But here we go. Yeah, we got Meteor nerfed a little bit. 800 crush to 750. 50 divine damage to 40 divine damage. It's still gonna wreck your base, but maybe you have a chance to survive. And what you wanna do against Meteor is to pop down a house, pop down a house, pop down a house, spread your villagers out. And then basically what it does is it tries to target something of yours, right? It always tries to target something. It's not gonna land in the middle of nowhere. So you want to give it targets, but you want to spread the targets out. If you do that correctly, it's not going to slam onto your town center and wreck it, hopefully. It, it still can do that. It's, it, you know, it's random, but you have some agency about it. Not nearly as random as the old one, though, <laughs> which is ultimately a good thing. Now we got the pistachios, or the pizzucas, as they call it properly, but uh, for anything but proper. Bonus versus heroes has been decreased, which, yeah, myth units shouldn't be good against heroes, especially ranged ones that you can mass. But pistachios themselves are weak, therefore they got buffed. So we've got, uh, instead of the 10 crush damage, it's 10 divine damage, which is even better than crush damage, even if you target buildings. But this is going to be sick against units. So it's not going to display these numbers, by the way, because it's a beam, right? So it does damage over time as the beam is active. So it's going to display like something way smaller. I think it displays a fifth of that because it's the beam is active for like five seconds or something. Yeah, I think it does 
display like 10 and 2. I think that's what it does. But ultimately it will do 50 pierce and 10 divine. Which then gets resisted, of course, the pierce part. Scorpion Man uh, has gotten a cost increase from 175 wood to 222 favor to 24. Uh, overall, a pretty important thing because the Scorpion Man itself got buffed a ton, so it shouldn't have this original legacy cost where it was dirt cheap. Uh, the poison just does a lot of damage. You can target the villagers with it, and they die. Like, two scorpions stinging your veils? Your veils are toast, man. Especially during Eclipse, it's very brutal, so... Something to watch out for still, but uh, within more reason, right? 200 wood is not that cheap anymore, so I think this is very appropriate. You should have st strong scorpion man for Egypt, but uh, it should also cost them something. Now the rock has been boosted, which I'm very grateful for, but uh, unfortunately this is still a steaming pile of crap. <laughs> Having to land and and lift off with the rock is just an absolute joke. I, I know I'm gonna be uh, getting hate mail for this, but the ability for the rock to hot pick up units from the old game has just been a superior design in every way. You now have all the ability to deal with it because there's all these ranged heroes. Even for the Norse, they have a ranged hero. And for the Greeks, all your four heroes can now shoot with ranged attacks rather than just your one ranged hero being able to chase the rock. No, everybody can do it now. Everybody has counters. Ah, uh, pfft. This shouldn't be an issue anymore. You know, just because people cried about catapult rock drops finishing them off in the late game, you can still do siege drops with this because the rock is actually higher health. So what they've done is actually make the siege drops even better. So th those are still not bad. Like you can combine this with Isis, for example. You could play an Isis and go for uh, the tot late game, right? And essentially load up your elephants and ferry them off to distant lands. <laughs> Drop them on enemy TCs. And there's precious little they can do about it at 5 speed. The regular heroes can no longer chase the rock. Uh, so this is awkward. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of this. I'd rather have the hot pickup micro and skill expression with the rock, with a weak rock that is vulnerable and easy to kill provided you catch it. At 4.8 speed, I would even say it couldn't go slower than that in exchange for this, but this fast, tanky rock that has to land, I don't know, man, this is just unengaging from both ends and ultimately just leads to late game drops and like uh, villagers walling your trade suddenly and nonsense like that. And you have very little agency to actually respond to it because of this high speed. I, I wish it went in the other direction, man. This is awful. Hate it. Human units, a feral rate of fire uh, sped up from 1.2 to, to 1. Uh, so Pharaoh is going to have a machine gun basically now. I'm just kidding, but he's going to be pretty good. And this is going to play into the classical age pressure plays that you can do, especially with the other stuff coming in here. So the X-Men are going to have a greater bonus against infantry, so you can basically forget, forget about going for... Uh, any infantry against early Egypt pressure. Uh, priests have had their uh, pierce and divine damage reduced, however, to just 2 from 2.5, which is, together with the healing stuff and the scorpion nerf and the eclipse nerf, this is actually uh, absolutely wrecking priest siege. So, priest siege is one of those strategies where you make just priests and siege towers, right? As you'd expect. Uh, Nephthys has an upgrade that makes priests cheaper. And you just throw down two temples, you get a siege workshop, and you pump the siege towers out. Uh, and then you got this super strong army that can heal itself, you got Ancestors Eclipse for a Vombo combo. And then you just go and push. It's really good against Atlanteans, and arguably before this change it was really good against anyone. <laughs> now I would maybe not even consider it against Atlanteans specifically. Now, why is it good against Atlantean? Because if you hit them in the Classical Age, what are they going to do? They don't have a strong archer unit. They have Terma. Terma suck. They're anti-archer. And the priests aren't anti-ranged, as they call it now. Uh, 
the priests are not tagged as ranged, they're just tagged as heroes, so ultimately almost nothing does bonus damage against them except that one tech that uh, Freyr gets in the Mythic Age. No one else can do bonus damage against heroes specifically. Well, Mythic needs to do negative, but you get what I mean. There's no direct counter to Priest. You have to have something with high pierce armor and high attacks and uh, good health. So that would be Cavalry. And Atlantean gets Cavalry in the Heroic Age. So, you know, you, you gotta get to Heroic, you gotta pump out those Contarius, and then get your nice surrounds. But you gotta get those numbers up, too. Because these guys are gonna be there masked. And they heal each other. But now it's gonna be weak. <laughs> A lot weaker. So it might not be strong anymore. Chariot Archer, bonus versus infantry added. Uh, just like the other archers, they'll be really good against infantry. So be watching out. Uh, you gotta be watching out when you rush Egyptian players with infantry. If they go fast heroic and they do get those chariots out, they're gonna melt you. Uh, this is gonna be real ugly. But considering the chariot archers are not double tagged as both cavalry and ranged, and units like the, I don't know, the um, Prodromos just absolutely wreck them. Who used to be only good against anti-calf stuff. Uh, well, calf stuff. And now the chariot archers are calf, which m makes everything in the Migdor stronghold a calf. Uh, I don't know, one unit type wrecking everything in there? It doesn't sit well with me. I think they have to change that. Uh, the double tagging is way too much, so I'm, I'm just not comfy with this. The change itself is good. The chariots did need that bonus against infantry. That that's that's good. But the double tagging it spooks me out. I mean, you just make Prodromos and Peltast and Mifunets, and what are they gonna do? Granted, mass chariots, Velmicrode, uh, using Garrison on the Migdol and all that sort of micromanagement and kiting. That's actually decent against Prodromos, especially once you have ballistics. So you gotta watch out for that as the Greek side, but if you manage to get off a nice flank and you have some Peltas already peppering those guys, then they're gonna be in trouble. Now the Siege Tower Crush Armor has been increased, which is what I mentioned before. Helipolis should no longer completely wreck them. They're still gonna freaking wreck them, don't get me wrong. This is a decent little buff though on this front, I like it. Then we've got the uh, Ramming Galley. With the hit points also increased to match the Panaconor. Well, not quite. They got 350. The Egyptian one got 320. So this, this ramming ship is not quite as strong. Which I assume is just part of the differences between the factions. Uh, Leviathan got the bonus damage against Myth units now. Very important. Same with the War Turtle. They just didn't get one before, but all the others did. So what the hell. Just fix it. It's fine. Bagel Stronghold got a nerf as well for the damage, just like the fortress I explained this before. Excuse me, having the hiccups. Isis Monuments got their god power blocking and heal aura radius adjusted. 20 to 25. It's a very small buff. Um, the god power blocking is... Uh, it's properly sized for ants. You can absolutely cast god powers within this. Hell, you could throw it down in front of a tower and people can still undermine your tower and get a tower kill. It's nuts. What's the point of this? Why, why would they make it so shit? Just make it good. Like, okay, god power blocking is annoying because god powers are fun to use. Don't take away the toys of the other god because it's fun. It, <laughs> I understand they want the pharaoh to empower it to double the radius, but come on, dude. You don't have to go double or nothing. You can just Make it decent to start with, like 30 range, and then give it like 50%, right? Then it gets 45. It's still better than it is than it was before this. Now it's gonna be 50 when you empower it, but it doesn't matter when 25 doesn't do the job. So it, it, it's a non-bonus until you empower. I hate it. I hate it so much. I, I do think Isis deserves a uh, god power exclusion exclusion area that works. Freyr's Gift now grants 10% hit points to all units. Oh, 
That includes like villagers and caravans and ships and everything. It's such a catch-all technology, but it's only 10%, so we don't care too much. I think it's fine. It's also going to be myth units, so that's actually a pretty powerful thing. I, uh, the Freyr's Gift tech is very expensive to get, though. Like, you get it in the late game, usually Mythic Age, when you have researched a ton of techs, and that reduces the actual cost of this one. Uh... 10%, it's nothing to write home about. It's nothing to complain about, so it's going to be fine. But he's going to have some strong fire giants. Hell, his Nidhogg is going to be actually decent. Um, but not everybody goes for that. Some people just go for Vidar, right? And then they uh, they make Fafnirs. Fafnirs are going to be strong, that's for sure. Golem Bursty can no longer be teleported by Shifting Sands. <laughs> what? Okay, that's just a bug. Uh, can still travel through the underworld, which is spooky. Uh, yeah, that's kind of spooky, actually, because the whole thing about this god power is it's insanely strong, but it gets slow as you move away from your TC. Well, an underworld lets you put it to another person's TC or a gold mine, and then it goes nuts on the vills, and it has a ton of AoE on its damage, so team game potential is high for Freyr, that's for sure. Then we've got the Asgardian Hillfort. Oxcarts were unable to garrison. Oh boy. Uh, flaming weapons. Favor cost increases by 50 each recast as opposed to just 25. Okay. So, flaming weapons was deemed OP by the devs. It's interesting because I haven't seen it much. I've seen a lot of walking woods though. Uh, which has the number of trees reduced. The heroic age timing got uh, slowed down as well, which is very nice. And the starting cost has been decreased for it, for whatever reason. So you get a recast for just 100 favor, but it's only 7 trees. I guess it makes sense. You should be able to defend against that uh, by the time the second cast comes around. And 100 favor is a lot of money. I'd rather put that into myth units at that point, honestly. A Ragnarok. Hero, hack damage has been reduced a bit. That's very important, especially for the Atlanteans. What are the Atlanteans gonna do against Norse, honestly? Like, they can probably hold on in the Heroic Age. That's probably fine. But then Ragnarok comes around with some siege weapons, and then what do you do? It's it's absolutely horrible. Uh, the back and forth is always brutal between the two factions, but honestly, the mobility of Raiding Cav in the Classical Age is just really brutal for Atlantean to deal with. It They certainly can deal with it. It's just... It's an equal game at best. And the Norse economy just grows faster because dwarves are crazy good. And the Atlantean villagers, not so much. If the Atlantean villagers start dying or getting raided too much, uh, you're not in a good spot, that's for sure. Alright, the Fimble Winter God power duration has been reduced. That's probably a welcome piece of news for team games where you can stack them. You can just make Fimble Winter cast, Fimble Winter cast, Fimble Winter cast, and then there's four packs of wolves in every single base on the entire map. It's nuts. <laughs> the Inferno God power uh, has Fenrir, the Firewolf, there. He has a lot of titles that I'm not going to list now. Uh, before the detonation, he does some AoE damage on the ground, essentially, which used to be 40 damage per tick, but now it's 30, so it's a little bit less insane. But, do you really go Vidar, uh, with, with Freyr? I'm not so sure, guys, I'm not so sure. It's definitely not bad, but wouldn't you want to get your... Uh, your strong fire giants instead. I don't know. I don't know. Rock giants got their hit points decreased a bit. So everybody has been going eager as far as I've seen. Uh, which basically makes the whole braggy thing essentially not that important. I've never seen a Freyr player go braggy. Uh, at, at a high level at least. So reducing the rock giant hit points a little bit. So that they can't just taunt an army and auto win <laughs> uh, is, I think, pretty important here. Then the portable ramps got the crush armor increased as well, so that you can't just snipe them with other siege weapons. 
arguably they are the ones that are gonna snipe the other siege weapons. But hey, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. You don't want them to suddenly get blasted by a thousand blister bolts and just die. Uh, Drecky hit points have been increased by from three hundred to three twenty. Uh, I'm sorry. Was that unit? Is that like the plural of Drakkar? I think it is. Which would be the hammer ship. Yeah, that's fine. That's not a human unit. That's a ship. Hillfort pierce damage increase from eight to decrease from eight to seven, including for the Asgardian Hillfort. Uh, we also got the adjustment. And then we've got Oranos, who had his bonuses clarified, but doesn't really mean that there was a change. There wasn't a change, in fact. Then we've got the Sky Passages, who build a little faster now. Uh, this is not 10 seconds, this is 10 build points. So there's a build rate somewhere hidden inside the villager stats, which aren't exposed in the UI, which should be exposed in the UI. But they're not, you get a building countdown instead. Uh, anyway, they'll build faster, just a little bit. Then the Empyrean speed technology will be a little cheaper for Oranos. That's a nice little buff. It's a little buff though. Uh, Sky Passenger... Sky Passengers are pretty good, so not too much to complain about. Oranos may have yet a place in the meta. And then we've got a Gaia buff where the cost reduction from for the upgrades in the Eco Guild have been granted a bigger discount by 5%. Very nice. Uh, Implode is now making the flying units immune. Um, doesn't affect them. That should be very nice for bird lovers. Carnivora bonus against villagers has been decreased so that you don't cast it on top of a gold mine anymore, which is very reasonable, I think. Uh, especially in combination with Shockwave, that was kind of kind of nuts what it could do. Uh, Volcanic Forge um, increases the yeah they've increased the Pierce Armor reward that you get for it, so it reduced. Vulnerability by 10%, now it's 15%. That's important. Leto did need something. I think she might still need some more. Automatons in particular are kind of weak, so I'm really hoping that automatons can see a little bit more play. You know, they have two layers of upgrades, uh, kind of like Colossi, but if we actually get to see more Colossi, even though this is a, a classical age god, so that uh, in combination with the fact that the Atlanteans have been struggling in the last patch, Maybe this is enough, considering that we're about to see a lot of human unit changes. We'll see. Then the Frontline Heroics technology for Oceanus. Uh, didn't get a buff, but uh, this is an upgrade display fix in the UI. Uh, once it's researched, then we've got the Argus properly inflicting burst damage at the end of the ability which hopefully will make them do a lot more damage. Honestly, the area of the Argus Spit is pathetic. It's so tiny. So I really hope they make that area bigger so that it's easier to avoid because you just see them starting the psh animation and you essentially just pull your units away. And then they've missed. And then you cackle. GG. Type 11 in the chat. Uh, Sentimanus has been adjusted. Got a smaller multiplier now against heroes, very important because they're very strong. The special attacks now can only toss up to cavalry waiting. Uh, there's a whole weight system in Retold, by the way, which allows units to push each other and whatnot, but it's also controlling things like this. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the weight system, it's really good for tagging, however, on these abilities. So it, it forms some common rules. However, this is once again not displayed to the player, which really sucks. I, I hate units pushing each other around, by the way. I really hate that. I wish just cavalry was good at surrounding things, but no, they, they actually help your villagers escape by pushing them. So that's hella annoying. I hope they uh, seriously change that or remove this pushing aspect of the weight classes or something because it's awful. I know they want the big boys like Colossi to just push through infantry armies and not care about surrounds, but 
it's part of the fun in RTS games when you get surrounds. So having the ability to, you know, just block things, I think is very important. And especially when it comes to the smaller engagements like cavalry against villagers. Special attacks now properly targetable over all units. Ah, yes, yes, that's what Sentiman is uh, targeting, which didn't used to work on myth units, for example. So that's great. Um, and the myth unit bonus damage has been reduced. Very important again. So it's a double whammy fix against big myth units. Not only do they uh, not get actually multiple applications of the ability, but they get smaller bonus damage received. Yeah, Terma have been sped up. That's very important. They are slow as hell. I think they lack range, honestly, guys. It's so hard with these counter... Uh, with the javelin throwing boys to get into range to hit archers when they only have 12 and then some of the archers have 20. How are you supposed to do that? Well, with 5.5 speed, it's more doable. But is it enough? I think not, honestly. Here, Terma also got more speed, which will make them much better against things like... Um, centaurs. That's very important because centaurs are abusing Atlanteans like there's no tomorrow. They also get more pierce armor, so once again, great against centaurs. Um, also for the heroes. And they also get a little bit of hack armor on the hero variant, that's great. Then the hero Arcus will be also getting a little bit of hack armor, which is... Important to differentiate against the Toxodes, right? The Toxodes just does a lot more damage, especially once you get to apply all the minor god upgrades. So you got something like Hades, who can uh, go up to above 13 damage per attack, and these guys are just stuck on like 9 point something. 9.5, I think. Uh, they, they need something like this. This is, this is a good thing. Then Fanatics have gotten a much needed buff. You only can make them from the palaces, so... You know, very much a late game tool. And Bite of the Shark isn't even helping them that much. So I, I I think this is this is a very important little change there. Destroyers have gotten an increased man. I haven't seen any destroyers because the games just don't go in that direction usually. In the old game, destroyer used to be such a staple, and now you just don't really get to see them anymore. So I'm really welcoming this change. Um, as well as for the hero variant, of course. Fire ship buff, just like the hammer ships. Palace nerf, just like the others. Mirror towers got more pierce damage. Um, I kind of want them to have divine damage, so I would rather take this away and actually nerf their pierce damage and give them like 10 divine. Like 20 pierce, 10 divine? That would be sick. And just because they are looking so cool. Have you seen their beams yet? It's awesome. Uh, then we've got map specific changes. Uh, with some reworks to the unknown and land unknown. We don't really mind too much. Highland is in the competitive pool, so we care about that. Uh, team games, I think, got fixed here, where the connections weren't spawning properly in team games. Then Mediterranean is removed, which is... Actually, I like it in the standard mode, but I hate it in the deathmatch mode. And the deathmatch players were leaving this map. So they ought to forward in the game found screen uh, before the ranked lobby really started. And basically, I was just searching for 8, 9, 10 minutes. Got a game, Mediterranean, and the opponent leaves. So, it, it, I, I wasted entire hours last week on this. Uh, I'm, I'm happy, but it's a little sad to see. What I would have preferred is they leave it in standard and they make a new map pool just for deathmatch. But maybe uh, the devs have data on how people have done something similar on the regular search. And they also alter for there. Like, you know, you can't see who your opponent is. You can't see their rating. You can't see their god. But you can see what the map is and you choose your god accordingly. Or you dislike the map and you leave. So that's a very toxic environment to be in. And actually, I think the real solution is to provide vetoes. But Mediterranean in the standard pool does make sense, so... Maybe we've just had too much of it in the old community and uh, we've got gotten accustomed to it. I know a lot of new players actually hate the water maps. So that's it. That's all the balance changes. 
And then we've got some important fixes as well for the multiplayer. Uh, they've introduced game ID URLs, which hopefully should make it easier to join games where you can link this. I have no idea, however, how to use these, so I haven't yet done this. Uh, I'll probably be talking about these during my streams, see how it goes. Uh, then chat messages should no longer have a delay. We can communicate! Finally! Man, that, that was the worst chat experience I've ever seen, so... Them fixing this. Uh, I was gonna review the game actually soon. And this was gonna be a huge rant, so I'm just happy now. Uh, rant averted. I'm not reviewing games day one, because these things happen. They quickly patch some stuff. And then suddenly your review is uh, just looking childish, you know? I, I don't want to give a big rant when they're obviously going to fix something. I do want to give a rant when it seems like they're just heading in the wrong direction, like with The Rock, like with the uh, crossplay and all that stuff. I think that does deserve a rant. We have the non-host players being able to invite other players. Nice. Improve searching for players to invite to games. Oh, actually, I have something to say about that one. I, I was going to skip over it, but hey, what if the the, the player list, the, your friend list and all that was sorted alphabetically? Would that, wouldn't that that be nuts? That would be crazy, dude. I mean, you've got offline, online, wrong order, no, no alphabetic sorting. You've got all that shit in the game. It's like... How do, how do people even come up with such a list? It's insane. I'm sure they'll fix it next patch now. <laughs> Therefore, we don't need to wind in the review, right? Uh, maybe I'm cursing it. Anyways. Reduce time to refresh the multiplayer browser. Yes! That was also such a huge thing that I was going to whinge about. Hopefully, don't need to now. Improvements to allow switching custom scenarios in multiplayer lobbies. Yeah, generally just the ability to switch game modes to anything, even custom scenarios, is very important. New option available in the settings to opt out of custom network play. We covered this extensively. Party chat is now available in ranked and quick match. Generally speaking, um, I want to say that the game is not social enough as an environment. Like, you have this social tab, but it lives so far outside of the game environment and it's so hidden under your username in the drop-down menu that you just feel like you're alone in this game and you have to go to several submenus to find the lobbies where all the people are. But there's no easy way to communicate. Your friend list doesn't show when somebody is playing a game. Uh, it doesn't show when you are ready to spectate them. So I want to be able to click on Joe and I want to be able to spectate from my friend list. I want to initiate that spectating function from there rather than scrolling down in a list of hundreds of lobbies and finding Joe by accident in a ranked game. Because all the ranked games are called ranked match, right? And that's just a pain to go through. I want to see if Joe is playing specifically because I'm casting a show match between Joe and Bill, right? And therefore I want to be able to find them easily. There's more coming. And I really hope that they fix the replays, because that's one of the worst things. I'm not able to cast my community's replays, because they send them in to me, and they're freaking broken. Like, what the hell, dude? Now that's gonna go in the review, uh, if they don't fix it by next patch. So, <laughs> let's see who's faster, me making the review or the devs patching this. We'll find out in a few weeks. Hopefully not a few weeks, like, let's say two. That's still a few weeks, damn. Guys, tomorrow is Red Bull Volalo. I'll be playing, I'll be casting. I'm assuming I'm dying at some point during uh, during that tournament, so... Somebody will knock me out, I think. I'm still very hopeful to make it to round of 32, but maybe that's too ambitious. We'll see. I'll try. See you there. Bye-bye.